Just a reminder, our draft guide, our full rankings, one quarterback, super flex, our must draft list, our all fade list, a bunch of other good ass sheesh in there is available for purchase on bg.co, but the easiest and the cheapest way to get it literally for $10 plus a 100% deposit match on prize picks is the way to go. People, if you go to prizepicks.com or if you download their app link in the description and you deposit $10 or more using promo code BDGE hats in store link down below. If you use BDGE, they're going to hit you with a 100% deposit match. So if you put down 10, you're going to have 20. If you put down 20, you're going to have 40, etc. Plus you're getting our entire website, our draft guide, absolutely free will be emailed to you after deposit. Go grab it. We are here today to piggyback off of yesterday's video where we went through the first six rounds of fantasy drafts and we targeted our favorite players in every draft. Some of them had two guys, some of them had six guys. We gave you a plethora of options to beautifully sprinkle your fantasy teams with players that will help you win your championship. Today, we're doing the opposite. We're looking at the first six rounds of fantasy drafts and I'm telling you the dudes that I'm not really going to touch. I don't like their values. They're just not targets for me for whatever reason. We'll break down every single one of them as we go through. So make sure if you're not subscribe to the channel already you put the d in the subscribe button and you hit the thumbs up button but let's get it all right round one we have two guys that i'm probably not going to see myself leaving the first round with and that's travis kelsey and joe mixon travis kelsey sim simply because i'm just not taking a tight end in the first round all right when you do that you leave your team with a big deficit running backs need to be drafted early because the wide receiver market in rounds like four, five, six is so luscious, all right? So you need your running backs early because they drop off tremendously once you hit the dead zone. So using a premium pick on a guy like Travis Kelsey really puts your team in a deficit, especially when you can get Mark Andrews, you know, at the end of the second, early third round and continue to pile up running backs early. One running back I'm just not going with is Joe Mixon, okay? Mixon just doesn't have the upside, in my opinion, as the guys that are going around him. Like now, it's almost like Najee Harris is going around the same spot, Dalvin Cook, but more, more specifically, even after him, guys like Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, those are dudes I would, without a doubt, take over him. He's just not getting the pass catching role in Cincinnati. He will never get that. You can't depend on him to repeat 16 touchdowns again in this offense. So Mixon's just not a guy. He's safe. He's safe. You know what you're probably going to get from him. You draft him at RB10, he'll give you an RB9 or give you an RB11 finish, I think, this year based on a little bit of touchdown regression, that ain't going to win you your league. And I'm looking for more upside players with my first pick in round one. Moving to round two, we have two wide receivers. Again, why I tend to lean more towards the running backs if you can't get one of the elite wide receivers in round two. Debo and Tyreek Hill are two guys that are wildly talented, man, and two guys that I might sound like an idiot at the end of the year. I just don't think second round draft capital is worth investing in two guys like Debo, who right now on prize picks, his line for the year, I think is 950 receiving yards, which is a far cry from the 1400 he put up last year. All right. So Vegas is telling you something with Trey Lance coming in as the quarterback. This offense is going to be one of, if not the most run heavy team in the NFL. I think we probably see a decrease in the rushing game from him. I like what I've been hearing about Brandon Ayuk. We obviously have George Kittle, but overall, I just think the rushing offense is going to be so high volume that it's going to be tough to see a lot of volume in the passing game for a guy like Debo. I, I just think second round is a little bit too hefty of a price to pay. Same thing with Tyree Kill. It's like, are we really buying into Tua? Especially when he's got to share the field with Jalen Waddle. It's going to be a lot of short passes. I get it. But Tua is not Patrick Mahomes. Now, I know a lot of Tyreek's production last year and just in his career has come at the line of scrimmage, has come in intermediate parts of the field. But the upside that Tyreek Hill presents, right? Everyone's like, oh, 90% of his targets were like 10 yards or fewer, right? But that extra 10%, it's almost like the 90-10 rule where the extra upside, the extra juice that you're getting from the squeeze with Tyreek Hill were those 60-yard bombs from Patrick Mahomes. It's the it's the difference between an 1,000-yard year, an 1,100-yard year, and a 1,400, 1,500-yard year. Like that's why you would draft the guy in the second round because you think he has that upside. I don't think he has that with Tua. He is, he is splitting the field with, you know, with guys like Jalen Waddle and other talented players. So I just don't really see the upside based on the deep connection that I don't know if we had that there with Tua. So second round's a little bit too risky for me with an unknown quarterback behind him. Round three is it was loaded with landmines. Now we're starting to see as the summer progresses, all the dudes that we were saying that we were yelling about all summer, round four, round five, our must draft players are starting to creep into the third round. And now I'm having a little bit of hesitancy. I'm getting whiskey dick. I'm getting whiskey click on these guys. So it's like DJ Moore, right? I liked him now that Baker came over. Solid fourth round pick. Travis Etienne, y'all know I'm super fucking high on him. Ezekiel Elliott. 
I thought he was in for a really big bounce back year. Now we're getting to the point where in sharper leagues, you got to draft him in the third round. And I have hesitancy because each of these guys has some red flag attached to him. Like DJ Moore just doesn't score touchdowns. That's a thing, right? It happens. People can keep talking about how, you know, he's due for touchdown regression. I think we just got exhausted with Keenan Allen with that, right? And they're similar players. I think we just got exhausted saying he's eventually due for this big touchdown explosion. Just didn't happen. Like a lot of players just don't get in the end zone for whatever reason. Maybe they're not as good operating in tight spaces and quarterbacks don't feel comfortable because they're of smaller stature in the tight spaces, whatever the fucking reason may be, Baker Mayfield might throw 18 passing touchdowns this year, all right? So more in order to have like a big breakout year and score 10 touchdowns would have to, it's, it's just, the math just don't add up. I like him in the fourth round, safe player, but you start to draft him at like pick 28, pick 30, becomes a problem for me. So I, I think for the most part, in most of the leagues y'all play in, you will see like ETN drop to the fourth round, maybe to the fifth round in a less serious league. So you could probably still get him where I think you need to be drafting him if he falls to you there. But if you got to start taking dudes like ETN over like Michael Pittman or something like that, or Zeke over guys like Michael Mike Williams and shit like that, I get a little bit more hesitancy. They were must drafts where they were, but as they start shooting up the ADP into these more premier picks, they become a problem. And if you think I sound like an idiot, y'all can prove it because our BDG three pass, which allows y'all to compete against us in the big dog bash. It's the giant fantasy football league with a grand prize of 10,000 fucking shares to our company. BDGE is available for purchase for like one or two more days. We are closing the minting process for these passes either tomorrow or the next day. So you've got about 48 hours to cop yours and they are available to purchase via credit card right now, right? The minting website is linked down below. Make sure you join the BDG3 Discord channel as well. So if you have any questions about the process or what the project even is to begin with, just know that you're competing in a very large, fucking awesome fantasy football league where all of our content in season is going to be made around that league specifically. All the dudes on the BDG team are competing in it as well as a bunch of your favorite like content creators and fantasy analysts and just guys in general. So if you want to get in on that BDG3, you can go check out more info, bdg3.xyz, or just go cop your pass right now. Again, available via credit card purchase, which is new, a new feature that we just rolled out like 24 hours ago, mint.bdg3.xyz. Come fucking bash with us. Once you move past round three, you get into round four and five of these dead zone running backs, which is where I want ETN, which is where I want Zeke badly, because I don't think they're dead zone guys. But once you get into rounds two and three, that's not the dead zone. That's like premier capital but round four and five is littered actually it's like round yeah round four and five is just littered with terrible running backs terrible running back value but amazing wide receiver value and again we talked about that in yesterday's video so i gave y'all like six seven eight wide receivers that you should be targeting in rounds four five and six yesterday's video will be linked down below go check that out and again it's hard for me to put like adp on these guys to know exactly where they're going in drafts but i think for the most part rounds four and five will be the dudes like Brees hall david montgomery cam Akers, jk dobbins i am actually out on all four of those dudes which i know is just leaving me naked to be exposed if one of them hits y'all are gonna call me an idiot which is a great fucking hit rate by the way if i'm fading three of the four and one of them hits like I, i'll fucking take that all day Brees hall He's going to be splitting time with Michael Carter, man. Way more time than you're going to be comfortable with. They also now are without Makai Becton. We don't know with Zach Wilson's injury. He should be back week one, maybe week two, maybe week three. This offense is just starting to deteriorate a little bit to the point where I'm not comfortable Brees Hall in the fourth round. If he takes over the backfield, I don't think it's until the second half of the season, if that. But Michael Carter is going to be a key piece of his offense as long as he's healthy. So Brees Hall... Get a lot of early down work. I think two-minute, four-minute drills might go to Michael Carter. I don't know what's going to happen on the goal line. So Hall, this is a little bit too steep of a price for me. Dave Montgomery, this is just a back. This is just a team that's awful. Cleo Herbert is really, really awesome. I think he's going to start taking a bigger role in this backfield. New coaching staff have no allegiance to David Montgomery. So I am very much out on David Montgomery in behind one of the league's worst offensive lines. Cam Akers coming back from the Achilles. I still don't know if we're ever going to see him at 100%, but everything I follow from Rams camp is telling us that this is going to be a split backfield. It is no longer a featured workhorse role for Cam Akers that we had wanted him to have coming into the league. Had he not torn his Achilles last year, the momentum is huge. The momentum was huge. He would have been the workhorse, but now it's going to be Darrell Henderson and it's going to be Cam Akers. They're going to split work, and I just don't really want a running back by committee guy in the fourth round. So I'm out on Cam Akers as where his current price stands. J.K. Dobbins' injury 
it's just all red flags. It's all red flags. Like fucking three days ago, he his knee got sore again at practice, so they had to give him days rest. Guys, we're like a couple weeks away from the season. This is a fucking problem, all right? This is going to be a committee. We don't know if we're going to get Dobbins at 100% health until like week eight, week nine, week 10. Who knows at this point? Their, their line is also not what it used to be, where they were opening up massive holes for every single running back that touched the rock. So these dudes going into the year at less than 100% have a much higher chance of getting re-injured, have a much higher chance at just playing less than 100% without the explosiveness that they had when they were coming out as college prospects. Dobbins, I already know, is going to be a guy. Dobbins and Brees Hall are going to be guys that I want all of next year that I don't want this year, okay? That's how I'm looking at it right now. If these guys start to fall to the fifth, sixth, seventh round, yeah, we will reconsider. But fourth round prices are something I'm not considering with any of these running backs. Give me all the wide receivers in that area. Give me all the Pittman. Give me all the Mike Williams. Give me all the Cortland Sutton there 100% of the time. When we move down to round six, y'all already know this at this point if you've been listening to anything I've been saying. But Josh Jacobs, of course, Antonio Gibson need to be both off your boards anywhere within the first six rounds. TJ Hawkinson is another guy that continues to be like the next tight end picked behind the George Kittle Dalton Schultz little tandem in like the fourth fifth round TJ Hawkinson is just a guy that I don't know why you would grab Hawkinson when you can wait around two rounds to grab Dallas Goddard to grab Dawson Knox in round nine like Hawkinson doesn't give you any sort of advantage positionally over those dudes it's had a few years to kind of break out we haven't really seen it and now the Detroit Lions are stacking their offense with more and more passing weapons so I don't see how he becomes an upside play whatsoever. Maybe he's a little bit safe, but he's also like very volatile week to week. So I would rather a lot of the guys going behind him ahead of him just straight up, let alone the fact that he's the first one picked off his board. So that'll wrap up the first six rounds of my least favorite targets, the guys that I probably won't leave most of my drafts with, if at all. Um, And that's a pretty hefty list here. And I just want to reiterate again, like I'm not fading DJ Moore, Zeke, or ETN whatsoever, but if they start going in the mid third round, that's the price that's a little bit too high for me to pay. Fourth round, fifth round, love them. They are fucking absolute targets for me. I just think we need to keep our legs on a swivel. I think we need to keep our head fucking screwed on tight. I think we need to tuck our shirts in before we hit the drafts. I think y'all need to hit prize picks and use that promo code BDGE and ride with me for the rest of the preseason because we are pouring in the revenue we'll do a quick recap of the guys i named we had kelsey we have mixon we have debo we have tyreek hill we have Brees hall david montgomery cam Akers, jk dobbins tj hawkinson josh jacobs antonio gibson as you can see it's a fat list of later round running backs this is why you want to get them early which is why you want to get them often which is why you want to draft against me if you like these guys and the only way to do so is by getting a bd G3 Pass, now available to purchase via credit card. I love you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button, and I shall see y'all tomorrow.